I want to tell you guys a story. I was talking to a teenage boy, and he was telling me a story about a boy he didn't like. And to describe this boy, he used the F slur. When he said this, I was surprised and definitely caught off guard. I didn't know how to respond to this. I knew that if I were to call him out or even in, I would risk losing my friendship with this boy or be forever labeled as the sensitive friend. But I also knew that if I chose not to call him out, he would never be behind his words. And before I go any further, I want to acknowledge what I'm be talking about. It's a systemic problem, but not one that everyone experiences the same way. So for the time being, I'm going to be talking about it from my perspective. I'm a teenage girl. I do normal teenage girl things like hang out with my friends, play sports, and watch TV. You could just call me basic. But even when you're basic, it's not easy being a teenage girl. And it's not easy being a teenage boy either. We're all in the process of finding our so-called true self. And along with that comes a lot of strong emotions and impulse, impulse choices. We don't know who we are, and we don't even know what we don't know, if that makes any sense. But I do want every person in this room to ask themselves, who am I to myself, and who am I to the people around me? Do you notice any gap, any aspect of yourself that you don't show either that you wish you did or you didn't? Only recently did I notice that I tend to hold myself back when talking to teenage boys. I don't let myself be who I am, and this continues to frustrate me. And I also noticed that my friends were running into similar issues. But why wasn't I letting myself be me? No one ever told me I couldn't be myself. But as we all grow up, we pick up on subtle things and change our behavior accordingly. For example, I noticed that teenage girls are often the center of jokes either about our body or our personality. I've often felt like I can't show too much of myself in, fe in fear of coming across as too sensitive, too weird, or too emotional. And I've also felt like my ideas and knowledge were not valued by some teenage boys in my life. And teenage girls also have to take the role of arguing against any Andrew Tate type figure who has managed to gain popularity with teenage boys. Sorry. Who's managed to gain popularity with teenage boys? But who told boys we are too weird, or too sensitive, or too emotional? Many boys live with the message that anything that presents as bad, such as showing emotions, self-care, or asking for help are all wrong. Similar to how I felt I couldn't be my true self, many teenage boys restrict their true selves in fear of presenting too feminine. I've seen a boy on the verge of tears tell me he will not cry in fear of looking vulnerable. And I've never seen my dad cry. A man who has raised me with the idea that my emotions are valid and should always be expressed has never shown me his own vulnerability. And it's because this message exists in almost every male. It's parasitic and it's harmful. And in the case with the boy who said the F slur, I believe this was his way of expressing what he has been told is masculinity. And this doesn't excuse what he said, but we can understand that it comes from a place of fear. Fear of not being man enough, fear of not meeting the expectations of masculinity. Society has created a suffocating cycle of toxic masculinity. It tells boys that big muscles, getting girls, and an unhealthy amount of anger is what it means to be a true man. But this message has shown countless times, over and over again, to be harmful. A study published in the American Journal of Preventative Medicine surveyed over 800 boys from ages 13 to 19 years old. It found that over two-thirds of the boys have participated in homophobic behavior as well as physical fights. And it also found that boys who have witnessed at least three, peer, three instances where their peers acted violent, abusively towards women were five times more likely to commit an act of violence. It's a continuous pattern, but there is hope. The same study found that boys who had progressive views about gender and masculinity were half as likely to commit an act of violence. So how do we break this pattern? And how do we help grow and nurture progressive views about gender and masculinity in every boy? It begins with the parents. Parents have the ability to shape the emotional growth of their son from the moment they are born. A study conducted on over 200 adults found that the perception of a baby's emotion is gendered, with adults describing a male baby crying as angry and a female baby crying as scared. The child that is described as scared is far more likely to receive the emotional attention that is needed throughout childhood, even though both of those babies were presenting the same physical reactions. So parents essentially have the ability to obstruct a boy's emotional development from the moment they are born. And although you could argue this could happen to both girls and boys, 
Girls are still taught to, ba to express their feelings, whereas boys are told their manliness depends on whether they do or they don't. A study published, a study done by Michigan State University found that boys who subscribe to the ideals of toxic masculinity are more likely to isolate themselves and grow up, which will negatively impact a boy's health as well as their overall happiness and well-being. What is desperately needed is a new kind of masculinity, positive masculinity. Positive masculinity teaches boys to value their feelings, and most importantly, how to love without constraints. As author Bell Hook said, men cannot change if they are not given the blueprints for change. Men cannot love if they are not taught the art of loving. So what I ask from every parent is to establish critical boundaries with your son and look at your own gender biases when interacting with your kids. Make it crucial and undeniable for your son to respect women. Teach them to feel their emotions. Teach them to hug their friends. And teach them to have uncomfortable talks. Teach them to value their emotions Expose them to women's perspectives through art and media, and let them get as close to their feminine side as possible. And if they are scared, let them be scared, but teach them that a threat to their masculinity should not result in violence. And when men and boys are taught to value their feelings, they will form even more positive and fulfilling relationships with the people around them, as well as a better understanding of themselves and their needs. And for anyone else who isn't a teenage boy who is supporting this change, we will grow as well. We won't feel the same pressure to conform to society's views of us. And there will be a place at the table for all of us. Teenage girls will hopefully feel comfortable, will hopefully not feel like the overly sensitive or overly emotional ones. And we will all feel free to be our true selves without constraints and without shame. <laughs> um, I believe that if society channeled the energy it is currently using to promote toxic masculinity into teaching positive emotional literacy, the world would feel like a completely different place. Positive masculinity is the next step in, cre in creating a society that is built on love, compassion, respect, and equality. And so maybe next time, the conversation with my friend will be different. Thank you.